So I recently added bending pistons to Minecraft, but how does it work, what can you use it for and what happens when you make this cursed piston push itself? As a quick recap, you can craft this new block like a normal piston but with an additional piston in the center. Place it down, then click the white particles to extend it and the orange ones to confirm. If you now power it, it works just like a normal piston would, but <laughs> better. I even implemented a push limit, so if there are more than 12 blocks in front of the piston head, it will just stop midway through the animation. Sticky pistons also work as you might expect and you can push blocks around corners for example. So is this a useless gimmick or actually revolutionary? Well, let's take a look at some applications. Transporting blocks is possible with normal pistons too, I mean, there are double piston extenders or triple or even infinite ones. But I don't know how to do any of that and I don't want to spend hours watching redstone tutorials. <laughs> so instead I spent a month coding this entire new block. Yikes. The default length limit is 10 blocks, so for bigger distances you'll have to build piston extenders like this for example. Or you just increase the limit. <laughs> You might not always want to transport blocks in a straight line though, and I don't even want to begin to imagine what that would look like as a normal redstone system. If you don't have slime in your world yet, you can even use normal pistons to push blocks diagonally. It's kind of a pain to set up, and if you make one tiny mistake you have to redo the entire thing, but even if it's not practical, it, it just looks so cool. What about blocks? Well, yes, but actually no. Since pistons take a while to extend, you can use their length as the clock speed. But this one's probably not too practical either because it just kills your frames while it's running. So clocks are no for me. Doors! Everybody loves them, I can build them. Like, what mumbo? How am I supposed to understand your level of genius? Oh, oh, nice, 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 simple doors. Yeah, nah, I'm out. Let's see if we can make this even more noob friendly. <laughs> all right, I played around for like two minutes and already got a working prototype. So if you press the left button, it opens and the right one closes it again. Slime blocks and honey blocks are unfortunately not supported. With that, it would have taken like 30 seconds to set up the door. For comparison, I'm now gonna follow a normal piston door tutorial. All right, this took me like 30 minutes and it doesn't even work. <laughs> My conclusion, speed and size clear W for the super piston, but coolness factor is an L for me. Old school piston magic is just so much more satisfying in my opinion. Of course you're not just limited to doors, so here I made a little hidden staircase for example that you can completely hide. Probably possible with normal pistons too, but this design was just ridiculously easy to set up. These were just a few very simple applications and now imagine what actual redstoners could do with this. So what happens when you actually make a piston push itself? At first glance it seems impossible because the confirmation is registered before the piston head placement. But we can fix that by just placing a few blocks in between. <laughs> so if we now activate the piston it blows up in its confusion. <laughs> to prevent angry comments would this feature actually fit the game? And is it a serious feature suggestion? So yeah. how does it work? Armor stands. The entire thing is basically just a chain of entities with various block models for the visual appearance. Of course, I also had to code in the push limit, the step-by-step -step spawn limit, and the ID system for more recipes and the power and the self This took me a month to make. Please subscribe so I can afford therapy. <laughs>